in this episode of Voyage of the Labyrinth. Every day I dive masses and instructors are diving against every Now that they've seen it, they've experienced it first hand, now they feel like, yeah, that is beautiful, I want to take care of it. Tiananmen Island is a jewel in the South China Sea. It's a spectacular place, all plunging cliffs and verdant jungle, but it's what's around the island that makes it really exceptional. It's a marine park whose incredible scuba diving attracts tourists from all over the world. But there's one visitor that cares nothing for its protected status. Human rubbish. Tiananmen's a special place for us as it's where Jolene and I first met James and Roxy and where the idea for this film series was born. We've returned as we want to help clean up the reef. And we also want to learn a little bit more about some local initiatives to prevent rubbish from entering the water in the first place. Team Labyrinth is joining local dive centre B&J to conduct a reef cleanup and learn more about Project Aware's Dive Against Debris data recording program. Hello. This is James. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, and what's over there? My name is Nick Emery. I'm the branch manager here at uh, B&J Diving Centre in ABC TMN. My name's Hannah. I'm the program specialist with Project Aware. We're meant to be a marine park, but every day we still see fishing boats going out and illegally fishing in the areas where they shouldn't be. That we get fishing pots. We get drift nets that have been, you know, they've lost it and it starts to drift onto our reef. And that can come not just in the marine park area, but from anywhere around. If the currents bring it, then it becomes a problem. So Dive Against Debris is Project Aware's um, flagship marine debris citizen science program. It's a global data reporting program that focuses on empowering scuba divers to be part of the solution. Every day our dive masters and instructors are diving against debris. Every day they'll go out and they'll find something, whether it's a you know, a plastic bottle or a Coke can or a piece of fish in there. They'll, cu they'll cut it out, put it in their BCD pocket and then get rid of it responsibly. Project Aware launched the Dive Against Debris Distinctive Specialty to provide an extra level of training for Dive Against Debris. The diver through the Dive Against Debris Distinctive Specialty gets that added level of training also. Divers can make an impact and show people that there is an issue with this and we need to do something about it, but it's only data that will drive that and it's only divers that can get that data. So that's why it's really important that dive centers like us start pushing these kind of courses so people have the skills to go out there and do this work that needs to be done. So I'm gonna practice what I preach. I'm gonna take the Dive Against Debris Distinctive Specialty. Nick runs Hannah through the Dive Against Debris lesson, which teaches her the best and safest way to remove rubbish from the ocean environment and how to report her findings to Project Aware. Tomorrow I'll be going out with Team Labyrinth doing a Dive Against Debris survey and it'll be the final seal of approval to get my Dive Against Debris specialty certification. We've decided to clean up Coral Island. Its secluded bay makes it popular both with tourists and illegal fishermen. It's a small marina here at Tiamen and we're a little bit boxed in. To get the boat out around we need to go in and then reverse out and get around past these two big cruisers here. So it'll uh, be an interesting manoeuvre, we'll give it a go. Bye. Watching the bow. Okay, Jake, what are you doing here? Right on. That was a bit of a 
tight one. We've barely left the marina when eagle-eyed James spots our first catch of the day. Okay, straight! It's a fire extinguisher. The bottom has rusted away and it's leaking chemicals into the ocean. Our first bit of rubbish! We continue to Coral Island, but are soon joined by some unexpected friends. curious dolphins attract the rest of the pod, he wants to play in Labyrinth's bow wave. A cheeky fellow has a trick to play on us. He comes from under the boat and sprays us with his blowhole. <laughs> Eventually, they move on leaving excitement and good luck in their wake. Labyrinth arrives at Coral Island. Large fishing boats moor here during the day. They're not supposed to fish in the park, but few can resist the rich pickings found in these protected waters. We brought Hannah out here because she wants to do her dive against debris out here. So Hannah, can you tell me a bit about the survey that you want to do? Sure, so we're going to be doing a dive against debris survey this morning. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be one of the final steps to get my dive against debris distinctive specialty certification. Um, so we'll be surveying the area, collecting the debris that we find on the seabed, bringing it back to shore, sorting through the rubbish and recording it down on the data card. After that, we'll then go and submit the data online. We need the data to provide the evidence and the accurate underwater perspective of the marine debris issue. Mm -hmm. Often it's something that policymakers can easily ignore because it's out of sight, out of mind. The everyday person can't see underwater. So the scuba divers are the only people that can obtain that data and bring that information to the forefront. Hannah and Nick plan their dive. They review the dive signals they will use to communicate. So like one of us reaches 50 bar, we'll come up. We're just going to go for an explore basically, but a uh, sort of maximum depth will be about 15 meters. <laughs> While Hannah does her dive against debris, it does a survey along the reef here. What me and Jolene are going to do is take the dinghy into these mangroves over here. Often the mangroves with their aerated roots are, act as a giant filter and stuff gets caught up in it. So we're going to go in and see if there's anything there that needs removing. Give a wave to the These big nets can weigh hundreds of kilos and in heavy seas will act as a wrecking ball, smashing the mangroves to pieces. No room for Jolene in the boat. Meanwhile, the dive team have found plenty of rubbish on the reef. Doing a dive against debris brings its own set of unique challenges. We need to get the rubbish off the reef, and we need to do it safely and without causing any more damage. 
Stuff like cans you can just pick up and put in a rubbish bag, of course checking for any animals inside first. But nets get caught up on reefs and removing them can be a tricky operation. We found this monster net and removing it takes time and effort to do it carefully. Not only can you get tangled up, but a hazardous animal like a blue ring octopus could have made it at home. I'm bundling it up so I can use this lift bag to bring it safely to the surface. It's quite heavy, so we'll use a winch on Labyrinth to get it out of the water. Last year, me and James delivered a catamaran to Thailand and it was tied down on the deck of the freighter that arrived in Malaysia with, with these great big straps. And I'm gonna throw them out and I thought it might come in useful one day. Yeah, yeah. there we go. All right, there you go. Cool. Yep. Okay, go. Okay. okay. Help! Help! Okay. Okay. La. So, as you can see, it doesn't matter how carefully we remove the net, there's still always going to be like bits of coral and crustaceans and stuff in there. So, that's what we're doing now. I'm going to take our time and go through the net and make sure that there's nothing that we can't save and put back. Time consuming and smelly. It's worth it. Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're just um, going through all the debris yeah, that, that we pulled out of the one. ocean because we have to sort it into various categories and it's Hannah's job to record how many of each different type of debris we've got so that we can, when we get back to base, we can upload all the information to the Project Aware website and then hopefully that information will fuel future research and Make a difference. So we've been out on Coral Island all day. We've done two dives and we've got into the mangroves and done, pulled out some nests there. We've got, how many of these, what, five or six? Five, five bags from underwater. Yeah, all full of cans and bits of handheld rubbish. We've got a big monster net off the reef and we've got a bunch of other stuff out of there. How, how do you think today go? It was good, it's nice to be able to pull up the debris obviously that we found. Once it's out it's not there to harm marine life which is obviously the aim of the game and now we've got some data that we can submit online and go into the global database to show what we've surveyed here <laughs> and compare it with the global effort. So it's really that easy, we can just go out do a dive like we did today, yep. submit the data to you yep and you go off and do something with it. Yeah, absolutely. It's easy. Anyone can get involved anywhere, anytime. Um, you just go out as your dive buddy pair or in a group, survey an area, pull out what you've got and just don't forget to submit the data. Otherwise we don't know it exists. Well, thanks very much for coming along with us today. It's been great having you on board and it's learning more awesome. about it. It's yeah. been awesome to be out with Team Labyrinth. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and you can find the links to the Project Aware site and the Dive Against Debris tool in the description section just below this video. So we're now back in the marina and we've got all the net from the mangroves and the reef and we need to dispose of it thoughtfully and responsibly. We do not want to create any more rubbish toward the environment now that we've gotten rid of all this stuff. So we've got these bags from Miracle Spectrum. They degrade over a year into inert material. So we're just currently bagging it up as you can see James doing now. And then we're going to dispose of it responsibly.
It's easy to be disheartened when you see the amount of rubbish that's in the ocean. It's all very well to pull it out, but how do you stop people looking at the sea as a giant garbage dump? Thankfully, there's some people that remain undaunted and who fight every day to defend the ocean. And Tiamat's lucky it's got an ocean defender of its very own. Hi, my name is Alvin and I'm working with Reef Shack Malaysia and I'm basically heading a program which is called Cintai Tioman where we are working with the local community uh, trying to empower them to manage the local threats that are facing the island. Alvin and his team know the best way to change a community is from within so they have dedicated five years of their lives to working with the islanders on Tioman. We've got a problem with solid waste, we've got a problem with sewage, we've got a problem with water shortage, we've got uh, issues with illegal fishing. So all these uh, issues come together and have a big impact on the reef and this is what we are trying to solve. Hello, how are you? So the plastic is all at uh, Charlie's place. We are going to be here for five years. The idea is like within these five years we will be able to get people uh, constantly thinking about it and constantly talking about it compared to the one weekend program where I just come in and say alright do this, do this, do this, okay bye bye I'll see you next year and these kind of things just don't work. Way back when people first settled on this island um, everything was very organic you know the way they lived everything like they caught fish and they ate it that day for the next meal they were using uh, things that are biodegradable you no know, leaves were used to wrap food like banana leaves were used to pack food uh, bamboos were used to um, to cook rice things like that but now uh, all these materials that they're using has changed but their habit has remained the same you know the idea that look i'm on my boat i've just had my lunch and where am I going to put this? Oh yeah, in the water. Whereas before when it was a banana leaf, it's fine. But now when it's a styrofoam package, it's an issue. Until last year, there was no recycling of any waste on Tioman Island. And um, we realized that a lot of the trash that was being sent to the incinerator actually was recyclables. So we started collecting plastic and now after about a year and a half we are sending out about two to three hundred kilos of recyclables every month and that's uh, amazing because plastic doesn't weigh much. Now we've got uh, plastics that are being recycled and aluminum cans and uh, our next aim is to start recycling used cooking oil and making it into biodiesel. For two years now we've been tracking the corals uh, when they spawn and we've got a lot of locals who have been interested in this so they follow us out and they wait with us in the night to see what we're doing wait for the corals to spawn help us with collecting the eggs it's nice it's not it's not big sciencey work but it's getting them involved you know and they feel like whoa this is so cool now i'm a part of it you know it raises questions it gets them talking it gets them interested so I think that was a, a big, big breakthrough we have had, getting them involved and getting them interested in what we are doing. Education is the main uh, focus of this program. It's getting everyone educated and we are starting with the kids because it's much easier to get them to change their ways and habits while they are young compared to the elder generation that has been doing things the same way for many years and don't, don't like change, right? No one likes change. Very surprisingly, when I first came to the island, uh, I found out that many of the islanders, the kids, they couldn't even swim. These kids have never even seen a live reef in their life before, right? So we had to teach them how to swim and once we got them confident in the water and they were good with uh, swimming, we taught them how to snorkel and then we brought them out to the reef. 
and they were just so happy you could see it. they were they would spend hours on the reef and um, just watching the different corals and the fish and asking us about it and it's amazing because it now that they've seen it they've experienced it first and now that you tell them look you saw that beautiful thing you need to take care of it now it makes much more sense to them now they feel like yeah that is beautiful i want to take care of it after we've talked to them and brought them out and uh, they've gone back and told their parents like look you know you can't you can't do this anymore you can't eat turtle eggs you can't throw your anchor on the reef because you'll kill the coral and your parents are like what you can't kill the coral coral is a rock and we're like no no it's not a rock it's an animal but it's amazing it's so much easier when we got the kids on site because then they go back and they tell to their parents and the parents tend to listen more compared to when we the outsiders come into the island and try to talk to these uh, adults or the people who have been here for a long time. One of the main challenges we face in this program is the fact that we are a non-government organization. So therefore we don't have the power, the authority to make changes and we can't change policies. Unless we get the support from the government, we will not be able to do anything. Unless the government gets on board and says like, all right, we are going to enforce these laws, or we are going to make these new policies to address this issue, then the change isn't going to happen and nothing is going to change. All our funding to do the work that we do comes from sponsors. We can be independent and not biased towards the government or anybody, but it also causes a problem in the sense that we have to spend a lot of time searching for funding and getting sponsors to sponsor this work we want to do on the island. The amount of time you spend like uh, getting the funding is as much as the amount of time you have to do the work. So we are trying to bring up the next generation of conservation and so things like that from the island because that would that would be the best solution to this whole issue. You know, if you've got local kids who have grown up here, then learned about it, understood it, gone to university, got a deeper understanding and then come back to their home and make the difference, it would I think it would make the change much more faster compared to outsiders keep coming back and telling them uh, how to do it or what they need to do. So, so I hope in five years when the program comes to an end um, that all these things we have set in place like the recycling, the education, the tourism, working with the dive resorts, uh, that it all becomes sustainable and it would continue. Um, so if we left the island and all these programs that we put in place will continue to go on, it would be just amazing, it would be perfect. It would definitely work if you could get the islanders on board, getting them to work with the government, getting them uh, to be part of the management, I think that it will be achievable, so hopefully. <laughs>